Welcome new and old friends. My name is 242, and today, two got us three creepy encounters in the woods stories. So, turn off your lights, make sure your doors and windows are locked. Things are about to get spooky. When I first became immortal, my biggest fear had been outliving all the people that I loved. But after spending countless centuries crawling at the bottom of the ocean, my biggest fear now is that I will never reach dry land. Waking up to someone in our campsite. Bye. SKC222 In the summer of 2019, my partner and I, both early 20s, decided to take a road trip to Vancouver, Canada, and then to stay at the Golden Ears Provincial Park. We liked camping, had spring break, and wanted to do something different and make the most out of our vacation. My partner had never been out of the US and it seemed like a crazy new experience. It was a six-day trip with an Airbnb in each state, and the grand finale was a reserved campsite at Golden Ears, and it was close to the water, Aluit Lake. We packed terribly, had a giant tent, bought a bunch of fruit and vegetables to eat healthily, stored them in a cooler that was too small, and brought a cutting board and a knife to break up the snacks while driving. We started in California, switching off driving our bright red Ford Fiesta. We drove through Oregon and Washington and made it to Vancouver. We spent a day or two in each state, drank a little too much, and stayed out late. Canada was the best part, and Aluit Lake felt like walking into a painting. We walked barefoot on the rocks with our toes in the freezing cold water. We hiked around and saw a beautiful waterfall where we saw a couple taking pictures of each other for an hour, and we started modeling the same poses from far away. Everything was perfect, and the campsite was empty except for the other couple. We went to bed early that night, it was quiet, and I woke up to crackling outside the tent. My partner was still asleep and snoring. I didn't think much of it because it was pitch black and probably an animal. The crackling continued closer to the tent. I sat up and grabbed my phone. The brightness came on and I turned it off, almost blinding myself with the light. In those two seconds, I could make out a person right outside our tent. I froze and sat up. They weren't moving and were close enough to unzip the tent. I started poking my partner because I had no idea what to do. They woke up, and I said there was someone outside the tent. Then I heard footsteps. Quiet footsteps walking out of our campsite. My partner starts loudly saying, What? Repeating in a sleepy haze. A car or a truck is parked right outside our camp area. No one is near our campsite. It started up and then drove off. They didn't turn their lights on until they turned the corner, and we were out of view, so I couldn't make out much, but it looked like a truck. So I'm shaking, and my partner can't put together what's happening. I want to leave, but Golden Ears locks their gate until 6 or 7 a.m., and it's 1 a.m., so we are going to be here. I make us move to the Ford Fiesta and fall asleep in the tightly packed car. She falls asleep immediately and thinks I'm paranoid. Could it have been a park ranger? It seemed too weird a behavior for a park ranger. I sit there wide awake for about two hours. The car is locked and I want to sleep but can't. I'm in the passenger seat. My partner is in the driver's seat asleep and it's 3 a.m. I'm sitting half awake. I hear the car slowly drive up the road. Lights off as it rounds the corner. It had to be the same truck. And I was scared, but my adrenaline was pumping. 
It slowly round the corner and pulled up directly in front of our campsite, again, in the same spot. I feel like I'm going to throw up. I had no weapon but the kitchen knife we brought for the fruits and veggies, so I grabbed the knife and tried and made myself look angry, crazy, and big. I sit straight up in the passenger seat, holding the kitchen knife. I keep it straight up at eye level and stare deadpan out at the truck in the pitch black, just like the father in the American Gothic painting. The truck stops and turns off. A light shines directly into my face coming from inside the truck, and I stare back, terrified, in my bright red Ford Fiesta, holding my large kitchen knife, not blinking. The truck starts up and turns on its lights, and they stay on, blinding me, and the truck pulls out and turns around and goes back where it came. My heart is pounding and I wake up my partner and say we need to get the hell out. We pack by just throwing things into the car and sitting there awake until 6 a.m. We drive home and don't stop. We keep rehearsing and trying to make sense of the situation. We ultimately decide that we both need some sleep. It's Morse code for... He awakens, she said. As we watched, more crows joined the ones already at my window, tapping in the same rhythm. I got followed in the woods by the same guy, by Anonymous. Preramble. I'm a late 20s female, and this happened fairly recently. Nothing bad happened to me, but I'm lucky it didn't, and it easily could have. There is a conservation area that I used to like to walk in regularly. It's beside a golf course, near an ordinary subdivision, just off a busy road, and is popular with dog walkers and photographers. The conservation area is fairly well maintained and alerts its users there are hidden cameras everywhere. My point in bringing attention to all of this is to say that by all accounts, this is very safe, vanilla, urban wooden area in a populated area. One big thing about me is I like to isolate to recharge. I just like crowded trails and by convention go in off-peak hours, or when the weather is unpleasant, not dangerous, but unpleasant, too cold, lightly raining, foggy, etc. I stay safe, but I like there to be as few people around as possible. In a city, in daylight, I don't feel like taking any risks by doing this first encounter. There was one day I went at around 4 p.m. or so on a frigid, rainy Monday in November. On days like that, there are maybe only one or two dog walkers, but today, there was no cars in the parking lot, except for a dirty blue pickup truck with a man sitting in it. I noticed he was looking at me, but that didn't really bother me. I was just happy to see the trail was empty. On this particular day, I went to the area to practice my navigation skills. I was learning how to use a compass at that time. And it's good to practice that skill in an area that you won't get lost in. So I decided to go off trail to the Big Pine Plantation, which is a big, open area of large, mature pine trees, if you're not familiar. It's not a hiking area, or really that interesting in any way, and definitely off trail. You wouldn't get there unless you really wanted to get there. So I picked up my first landmark and sighted it using my compass, and I'm pacing towards it. I find myself about halfway there when I hear rustling through the bushes, and I turn around to see the man from the dirty blue pickup truck there, 
entering the pine plantation. Mid-50s, white male, a little pudgy, wearing a baggy beige cardigan and blue slacks. I feel pretty alert at this point, feeling out of place somehow. I take note, but pretend to keep walking around with my compass because I don't want to seem weird. I look at him. He pretends to ignore me. I'm getting a really bad gut feeling about the situation for some reason at this point, and I feel like he's following me, but I have an anxiety disorder, so I try not to freak out for zero reason. I don't want to ruin my relaxation time. It's just a guy walking around. No big deal. To see if he's following me, I pivot 180 degrees, and I walk directly towards the trail again. He's still following me. I walk through the bushes onto the trail, still following me. At this point, I was freaking out. The pine plantation entrance is only about 50 feet on the trail, so this guy would have walked 50 feet, entered the pine plantation, and then decided that was it for the day? Bad odds. Definitely following me. I quickly exit the trail, and when I'm leaving the parking lot, I see he's still looking at me. I take the long way home. The experience freaks me out, and I only visit the area once before the second encounter. Second encounter. This time was in January. This time was in January. This time, I went to go bird watching. A week prior, I had seen an owl in the same pine plantation. I was practicing navigation again. And I wanted to see it again. I had seen it about an hour before sundown, so I figured that was a good time to try to see it again in the same area. I checked the parking lot, and there was no blue pickup truck. But there were two other cars with men. One with a red sedan with heavy tinted windows, and it looked like the other one was empty. So I go to the trail again. Today is muddy, wet, and cold. Area should be totally empty. Good. Unfortunately, not so. About 20 feet on the trail, I hear footsteps behind me. I didn't like when people walked behind me, but it's not a crime, and I'll lose them soon when I go into the pine plantation. I'm sure you know where this is going. When I walk on the pine plantation... There is the same rustling of the bushes before, and when I turn around, I see the same man from before. I feel a wave of terror and dread overcome me, alone in a muddy forest with a possible stalker. But it's still so calm, and it feels so mundane. To confirm my fears... I walk over to the area where I saw the owl last week and pause to look for it. Who do I see next to me is the same freaking guy from before. I'm terrified at this point, and every part of me is screaming run. So I walk as fast as I can to the trail again. I pass some other random guy in the same pine plantation and smile at him, just totally on autopilot. He smiles back. It wasn't until I was in the parking lot where I get freaked out that there was a second person in the same pine plantation. Could they be connected somehow? I stop briefly in the parking lot and take out a small notebook to quickly write down the license plates of the two cars. This gives the original man to catch up to the parking lot. I book it out, on foot, out of the parking lot, and he yells towards me. Can I give you a ride? and I just shake my head and keep walking. As I walk away, he begins to follow me in his car. He waits at the intersection to see which direction I'm going in. I decide to walk in a busy park to lose him. He pulls into a nearby hidden driveway and stares at me, and takes out his phone to presumably take a photo of me. He notes what direction I'm walking in, then does a U-turn and drives fast the other way. Conclusion I took the long way home, filed out a police report, and the police opened an investigation on it. 
I have not gone back to that conservation area since, and the experience has definitely left me with an ongoing nervousness about being alone. Doubly more because I don't know who the second guy is. I passed him so quickly, I only know he was in his mid-50s and had glasses and was bald. The police unfortunately told me there's nothing they can really do at this point. So the best I can do is stay vigilant and try to not let it freak me out too much. Unfortunately, this has totally ruined my love for going out into the wilderness alone. Nothing bad happened, but I think that was more because I was able to escape and lose him, them, before anything did. To the random two almost stalkers, let's not meet. One night, Julie dreamt that she had drowned her baby brother in the tub and woke up, relieved that it had just been a bad dream. Hours later, she was horrified to find her brother's crib empty and could hear her mother's loud wailing coming from inside the bathroom. I think there was a skinwalker, or some type of thing like that, at my grandparents' farm, and it creeps me the fuck out. Bye, Bubble Nugget 62. Okay, so I've been a skeptic of creepy paranormal things my entire life. I've never really believed in that type of stuff, but the thing that I heard slash witnessed at my grandparents' farm shakes me to my core. My grandparents own a large plot of land in central Missouri, and they have owned that land for around 40 years. I have been to that farm over 10 times, and every time I go, I always get this terrifying feeling that something is watching me. Like, there's always something behind my back. I have also had many strange encounters there that are downright bizarre. My first encounter with whatever the hell this thing was when I was around the age of 7 to 9, I'm currently 14, we had brought our dog named Spot to that farm. He was a silver lab who I love dearly. I was exploring in the forest behind the house, just enjoying the summer breeze, when my dog started growling. A deep, sinister growl that I have never heard him make. I turned around quickly to see what he was growling at, but could see nothing but forest along forest. While my eyes were scanning the area of where my dog was growling, some animals shot out of the bush so fast I could barely see what it was. And before I knew it, it was gone. I sat there for what felt like an eternity, absolutely flabbergasted by what I just witnessed. From what I could see of it, it looked like a coyote, but the speed at which it moves was absolutely insane. Moved like 90 miles an hour and made almost no noise. But the most creepy part was that the place it jumped out of didn't even make an impact of where it had laid, and from where I viewed it jumped up, I should have been able to easily see where it was hiding. Shocked by what I witnessed, I just decided that was enough and went back inside the house. My second encounter happened when I was around 10. I was visiting the place and, like usual, I was getting that feeling of us being watched. The first day was normal and nothing really creepy happened. I was just spending quality time with family. But when night came, that's when shit started happening. I was trying to sleep in the twin bed that was shared by my mom's brother when he used to live there. When I heard a tapping. Not a tiny little tap, but a loud taps, almost like banging. It was coming from the direction of the window. I slowly sat up and looked out the window, but there was nothing, so I assumed it was just some animal or something like that. Five minutes passed, and no tapping. 
and I was drifting off to sleep when, boom, this time not a tap, a slam, a loud slam directly into the window. I'm not talking about a little hit. It sounded as if something absolutely massive hit the window. I shot up so quickly I nearly passed out. I decided enough was enough and grabbed a flashlight in the drawer and shined it out the window. Nothing. Ten seconds passed. Nothing. I was about to crawl into my mom's bed when I heard it. A screech. A screech that was not achievable by any human. So loud it pierced the quiet, peaceful summer night. I can't put it into words what the sound sounded like, but it was dark and horrible. I still remember it to this day. I froze. Unable to move a muscle, I was so scared. I was sitting there still as a statue, petrified by what I heard. That's when my instincts kicked in and they told me to run into my mom's room, which I did. For some reason, it didn't wake her up. I just cuddled up next to her and didn't sleep the entire night. All I could think of was that sound. That horrible, terrible, blood screech. My next encounter was when I was around the age of 13. I was back at my grandparents just to enjoy my time like I usually do when my grandpa suggested that we go deer watching. I agreed because I've been doing this since as long as I can remember and it was never an issue and it was extremely fun. So we took the Polaris and went out around 6, 7 p.m. to look for deer. We decided to go into the most eastern pasture because they usually were we spot the most deer. 30 minutes passed and... We had seen a few deer, but not as much as usually do. But this is where the shit begins. I get that feeling again. That dreadful feeling that something is there, in the shadows watching me. But this time, it's a lot more intense. Like it's right up behind me. But when I look, it's never there. It appears that my grandpa feels the same presence as me too. Just to let you know, my grandpa is a very laid-back individual, always joking and having a laugh. The only time I've ever seen him to be very serious is when my great-uncle died a couple of years ago. So when I started feeling that I'm being watched, my grandpa goes from a happy and laid-back expression to very serious and alert expression. He gripped the wheel so tight his knuckles turned white and was constantly looking around to make sure something wasn't following us. He then made a massive U-turn out of nowhere and started heading back to the house. I asked him, what are you doing? And he replied with, we're heading back to the house. The tone of his voice was cold, like he had witnessed someone being murdered. At this point, he was gripping the wheel even harder and was absolutely going pedal to the metal full speed back to the house. I decided not to ask any questions until we got back to the house, which we did in no time at all. Once we were there, he rushed me into the house, constantly checking his back to make sure something wasn't there. When we were inside, he closed and locked the door tight. His behavior was very alarming, and it really shocked me to my core. I decided that all of this stuff I had witnessed was enough and only asked him one question. What the hell is going on here? When I said that, he looked at me and gave me a cold expression and said, I have something I need to explain to you. We then sat down for 30 minutes and he explained that whatever this thing that was living on his property has been here since the day he moved in. And he and my mother had experienced the same thing that was happening to me the first few years of living here. He explained that he had seen whatever this thing is, and that it doesn't like new visitors. Hence why I was experiencing all of these problems. He told me all about the things he had witnessed and experienced, and they seemed to him pretty similar to what was happening to me. He told me that he knew that this was going to happen to me, and that we were always watching to make sure I never got hurt because he knew this creature better than anyone else. 
We talked some more, but all of it was the same. It was now late, and he decided that I couldn't sleep alone, so he had me sleep with my mom. We luckily promptly left the next morning. I have not been back since that day. Last encounter. This last encounter isn't really an encounter. Two things have happened at my grandparents' farm. Recently, we brought my sister's horse to their farm. The first night for the horse was hell. My sister's horse has always been very friendly and not shy, but the first night of my sister's horse being at the farm was bizarre. The next morning, my grandpa woke up and was doing his usual chores and went to feed the horse. He knows that the horse was acting very weird, extremely shy and timid, but when he took a better look, he was shocked. The horse had three 10-inch gashes down its side, like something has clawed at it. It was ruled that the horse had ran into the fence, but I think otherwise. Also, around the same time, my grandparents adopted a dog and named it Panda. Panda was a Jack Russell Terrier who was about two months of age. Five days later, he was found dead with deep puncture wounds on his body with his neck slashed up. They ruled that it was a bobcat or a mountain lion, but I also think otherwise. Someone doxed me, so I tried to get revenge. I hacked their phone and enabled their location so that I could get their address, but it showed my home address instead. And with that, we're near the end of this video. I'd like to thank everyone who let me read their stories, and I hope all of you can stay safe. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and make sure it feels it. If you're new, subscribe and turn that pretty little bell to all notifications. If you'd like to help this channel slash podcast, just share it with anyone you might think who might enjoy it. It seriously helps a lot. And if you'd like to help in other ways, I have Patreon, merch, and a PayPal. All these things help, but of course, I'll never expect it. It's just appreciated, guys. You know what else I would like? A comment. But I would love if you would use the Sunday word that I got for you this week. And on screen right now is everyone who had an entry last week. I promise I won't revoke any of you from being able to watch my channel. And this Sunday's word is facade, which has two meanings. The first being the face of a building, especially the principal front that looks onto a street or a side space. And the second meaning is an outward appearance that maintains to conceal a less pleasant or credible reality. As always, if you're on YouTube, just write me a comment down below using this word and you'll be on next week. Or you can at me on Twitter and use this word and the same thing will happen. Pictures go up on Twitter every Sunday. But as always guys, thank you for watching and listening. It really means a lot to me. Sleep tight and don't let 42 bite.